Welcome, everyone, for another episode of Debased on a True Story, a Monster House production. Uh, my name is Matthew Baxter. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Stoltzner. And I'm Blake Smith. Now, this <laughs> week, are you referencing that we're not wearing pants? What, what it was that? <laughs> well, I'm I'm pointing down to Blake, but it often oh. seems that uh, which is funny. Actually, because actually you should like... point up that way because he's yeah, yeah. He's going yeah, to be he's, up he's, that right there. He's in yeah. heaven. We're gonna he's get there. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're gonna get this Brady Bunch thing figured out. So yeah, because yeah. yeah, I think I have to look this way. I need, need a few more members. Out. Yeah, That's Alice it. is easy. Yeah, um, I think it. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> Sam's delivering meat. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, bowling league. Yes, I... <laughs> He's right. good with his it's... balls and he likes delivering meat. So what are you going to mm. do? Um, good old Sam. So anyway, this uh, this month we are doing a uh, sort of look at a wonderful film. I, before I even get started, I, I want to say that there are probably going to be spoilers. Spoiler alert in this. Don't watch this if you don't want to know, but there is a possibility that the paranormal is not real. So, um, <laughs> I thought you were talking about spoilers about the movie, which is a given with this series. Yes, yes. Everybody yeah. already knows. It's all about spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. yeah. I wanted this movie to be better. I'm just going to say that. I, the, <laughs> Yeah, right out of the gates. Any movie yeah, I, I have to watch, I want way. it to be better. But this one was extra wanting it to be better. It was disappointing. Um, it was. Yeah, well, there's it, it's got it's there's so many moments where I thought that's cool, that's cool, but somehow I'll put it all together and it's like you know not that good. No, <laughs> I I don't think we've mentioned the name of the movie. Yet. I was just getting ready. <laughs> like, this is 2014's The Quiet Ones, and they it, probably could have been a little more quiet. Uh, yeah, it's not a very quiet movie. Also, just make sure this is the 2014 version you're checking out because there are yes. other movies called The Quiet Ones. Yes. They may be better. They may be. Yeah, so, so maybe you don't check. Um, but this one's based on a true story. So that's what we're covering it. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. uh, that, that true story is also known as the Philip Experiment, which we will uh, talk about in depth a little later. But to talk about this movie itself... Um, Sort of the, the premise of the movie is that in 1974, I believe, there was a college professor that was convinced he could cure mental illness. And uh, on top of that, he felt that paranormal activity was actually caused by the person that it was sort of surrounding. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that, you know, if someone thought they were possessed or they had a poltergeist or whatever, that it was actually the person themselves that was causing it through, uh, you know, psychokinesis, telekinesis, uh, things like that. Um, so he wanted to basically do an experiment and find out if this was the case because he thought he could cure the world if he could. Uh, uh, if he could cure his... one patient, you could cure mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird. So, um, yeah, so so we've was, got a I limited think, um... amount of time, so let's get started on the problems with this right away. <laughs> um, uh, well, I so... mean, just as, a, as an academic myself, uh, one of the, the first things I thought, so this was supposedly at Oxford University, yes. and uh, uh, pretty soon into the movie, he had his funding taken away from him and um from, from the university so. yes. <laughs> well i mean we're going back to the 70s when this supposedly took place yeah. but uh funding sources usually aren't universities usually you're having to apply for external funding from industries or from sure. Sure. Uh, Granted. maybe government agencies <laughs> grants Granted. things things like that so, so oh, wait a second um wait, wait. yeah you you're not going to be funded <laughs> by the the university so i thought that that was kind of and and i think that they, they would have had issues with uh, the the ethics uh of what he was doing as well and certainly nowadays if you want to do any kind of research that involves other people then you have to go through ethics committees and councils and get approval and it's a very yeah. lengthy process and there was absolutely nothing like that in this and, and i just kind of wonder how he had acquired the subject i thought that was all rather dodgy well, it was. it was probably one or maybe 12 ethical problems. Yeah, there's uh, a lot. Like At least, yeah. yeah. But I, there is an interesting thing, though, that's going on here, because it, it, this is a very fictional story, and we're going to get into the, the supposedly true part. But mm -hmm. this, 
not tied to this at all, but curiously parallel. And I don't think accidentally this, this is very similar to a theory held by a guy named William Roll. And uh, William Roll was a, a, a protege, a protege is that the right word? He, he was a student and, and later an academic colleague of, of uh, J.B. Ryan. And J.B. Ryan right. was based out of Duke mm -hmm. and Duke mm -hmm. University uh, used to support his research, but then it distanced itself and he basically moved a little bit off campus. And I thought that there were some little parallels there to maybe the J.B. Ryan story. Yeah, so, that is interesting because yeah, I think a lot of people would still talk as though he was associated with the university when he no longer exactly, was. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And William Roll was the guy, he, he was one of the first people to postulate that uh, poltergeist activity was actually based on the energy coming, psi energy or psionic uh, telekinesis coming from the subject of the poltergeist, like the source of it being some teenage person with psi powers. And he continued to think that uh, until he passed away. So, mm -hmm. yeah, anyway, we definitely now. have um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It, uh, the confusing thing is, uh, I mean, to jump into the, the, the true story behind this, uh, the focus is on seances. And yet this movie was a real mishmash for me of reputed phenomena. I mean, further into the movie they certainly do explore seances from a few angles but i mean that's really not the main uh phenomenon main that's taken place there it was yeah i mean confusing I mean, there was a lot of confusion on exactly what um well for one for younger viewers and by younger i mean anyone that is probably uh you know 45 or younger is going mm. to think that they were blasting quiet riot in at her but oh. no it was actually the british group slade that um that quiet riot would cover and sound almost identical to so uh that was that's a scary one of the part big, of the film though, that was, it was very terrifying <laughs> and it was confusing uh so yeah not quiet riot at all So just so you guys but know. But there were, I mean, there was poltergeist activity. There was kind of telekinesis and uh, uh, you know, ghosts. Um, uh, uh, I really just and the, uh, the opening mishmash. credits are all demons and witchcraft. Like, like so you, it's like, if it's paranormal, shove it in here, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Certainly towards the end, um, they introduced uh, what are Sumerian uh, beliefs Demon. and, and yeah. yes, Satanism. And oh, it was just very confusing. I don't know who uh, it was written by, but the script was just pretty poor. Yeah, it was written by a, a group of people, actually. Uh, Craig Rosenberg, Oren Moverman, and John Pogue, or who were listed on IMDb. But if you watch it, it says the, the screenplay is uh, based on a screenplay by someone else. Uh, well, by you know, Tom, they can, okay. Tom they DeVille. Can spread the blame around that yeah. way. There's no Maybe one that person is to one accuse. excuse. That it could be one excuse as to why it was so confusing and all over the place. That's why and we have also, three is, people it, on this show. Is, you know, it's a little yeah, it's a little confusing. But they, they, this was produced by Hammer, uh, mm -hmm. who had gone out of business for a long time. It, it came back, and I think their first movie when they came back was uh, The Woman in Black, uh, which mm -hmm. had um, uh, Daniel Radcliffe in it, uh, and, and yes. a pretty close adaptation to the to the play. And, uh, and so this, I think, was their second feature, but this was made in 2012 and then didn't actually get released until 2014. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. I get the impression because they knew it was kind of a mishmashy mess. So, but again, there's moments all through it that I thought that's really, you know, that's executed well, that's executed well. It just didn't hold together. And then the ending seemed incredibly rushed and confusing. Yeah. Well, I want to add to um, the movie, The Apparition came out in 2012, and that was also supposedly based on the quiet uh, on uh, uh, the Philip experiment. Yes. So I'm wondering if they didn't stagger the release of this movie so that it didn't come out at the same time. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think I know that one. Yeah, the apparition. Um, and it actually has lower ratings than this movie. <laughs> um, Holy moly. If that was possible. <laughs> yeah. But it's got the Winter Soldier in it. It does. And Tom Felton. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. So it's got, so, it's, yeah, that was the thing. I, I, one was, I was telling Karen that that's one of the redeeming qualities is that. Uh, um stan was in it's the winter soldier so uh that that was uh something i still haven't watched because of the the ratings are so low on it but uh yeah but even with the title is kind of confusing that there's really no direct reference to the philip experiment uh and they don't reference that term until right towards the end of the, the, the movie quiet ones. Not, yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. And and it kind of reminds me of those songs, you know, where it's like, why is it called this song called Purple Sneakers or whatever? And they don't mention it till right at the end. And mm -hmm. it's just a kind of throwaway lyric. So I thought that there it just wasn't wasn't very clear at all. And, and apparently anachronistic. Um, I think that song came out in 75, if I remember correctly. So yeah, okay. anachronistic. So <laughs> Not important, but the, 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 it, thanks yeah. for throwing that in, though. No, no, it's important <laughs> for our listeners uh, and viewers. Look, we're on YouTube. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry so, about so, that. People. So, but ethics aside, they decide mm. they're going to continue this experiment, even though the universe has pulled their funding, and they pull away to a house out in the burbs uh, and continue their policy of playing loud music and annoying the neighbors. Um, uh -huh. what, what's the point of that exactly? They're, they're trying they're to trying play to drive music. her crazy. They're oh. trying to keep her awake because they feel yeah. that sleep deprivation will cause her to manifest yeah. uh, these, so these things. torture in the movie as well. Yes. That's what it looked like to me. It looked like they were keeping her imprisoned in a cell and playing. Mm -hmm. like, it's mm -hmm. basically stolen straight from the U.S. military's behavior uh, in, in the, in the uh, post 9-11 world of uh, trying to get terrorists to talk. Well, you know, when I think they got Enhanced confused, yes. they, they got confused yeah, yeah. on which yeah. Philip they were yeah, yeah. You know, doing this, like, <laughs> Philip Zimbardo. Um, yeah. But uh, oh. it's, uh, yeah, it, it's really well, bad. <laughs> what they're yeah, doing. Well, they, yeah. do, they, they have her locked up in this room and mm -hmm. uh, they well, occasionally pull down that kind of little door so that they can peer in there and she doesn't even have a bed in there. I think at one point there's a mattress, but uh, uh, I mean, nothing would really prevent her from, I think, escaping from a window or something. But, you know, they've got her wearing the same kind of hospital gown the whole time. She never seems to shower. She never seems to even be fed. Um, but she seems to be there uh, by her own will and that she's mm -hmm. wanting to be cured. Yeah, she believes in this uh, this professor. Um... That, that he's going to manage this. But but even the house itself is interesting because it was for lease. And usually when you want to rent a property or lease a property, you clean it. And this place had garbage on the stairs and it was just like it was abandoned. Uh, so it's very weird um, how well, all this... I think they were trying to give you the impression that the place was haunted as well. It was a kind of environment where... Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, the house was You haunted. would see ghosts yeah. and... Yeah. But yeah, that, uh, even no, still, no, that no. place would have would have cost a lot to rent even back then and mm -hmm. it they kind of implied that it was uh, the professor or copeland that he had he was doing this i think on his own dime at this point yeah yep yeah i remember him <laughs> telling the uh the uh, uh brian the guy who was filming that uh he didn't have much money but are you still in kind of thing so yeah that was certainly referenced yeah and uh, I mean, talking about unethical again, he, he seemed to be the professor. Professor seemed to be having an affair with um, the Everyone. well, well, the, the mm -hmm. female students, and I mm -hmm. cannot remember her name. Chrissy. No, Chrissy. Was it, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Yep, yep. She this, was having an affair with the professor and the assistant, and it, but it, they kind of portrayed it as though the professor was in love with the subject, too, mm -hmm. or had there was a weird kind of daddy issue thing that was going on that was very uncomfortable between I think the the researcher mm -hmm. as well and uh, the subject so it was just a kind of love triangle several love triangles yeah N none of them particularly convincing <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no that's true paranormal that's romance true. Uh, Dr. Copeland is, is is played by uh, Jared Harris which I don't know what people would best know him from I I recognize him as Moriarty from the uh Sherlock Holmes movies with uh, okay. uh, uh, um, 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 Iron Man. Um, 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 Robert Downey um, Jr. Um, Robert Downey Jr. Thank you. Wow. Old brain. Broken. Broken. So. <laughs> yeah. Could be but, long uh, COVID. So I guess we should have started out with a ginger warning. Red haired, you know, villain. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yep. Judas. Yeah. But yeah, I... I well, that's that used to mean... Um, yeah, that... that, 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 that I'm going off topic now. No, no, it's like I was, yeah, I was just making a lot of people. I don't know why. I, I, I love red haired people. They're fine. It's like many of them. There was a belief that the their Judas... red hair. And, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on to become contributing to this. Was a red head and that's I did not know a, that. an, an insult term in, in French. But anyway, that's, let's really, that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you need to what? read on the offensive. Bon <laughs> 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 But yeah, I, I, I just didn't really enjoy this film. And uh, I, I think 
it's probably my least favorite out of all the films that we've been wow. watching for this series. Yeah, yeah I mean, because we watched had some... that Annabelle movie. That's something. Yeah, <laughs> Annabelle yeah, was well, actually think... more fun than this. Well, yeah. They kept to the theme more, and uh, I think that the uh, other elements of the movie were more enjoyable still just being interested in those topics but this was just such a jumble and well, so confusing it was just and- to, i'm gonna blow the ending if we if you don't mind the the so the whole thing is the professor thinks that you can get people to manifest this energy it, it get it out of their body like into a doll or something and then once it's mm-hmm. there we can destroy it and basically cure them right mm-hmm. and then it, it turns out that um is it what's her name oh god jane uh, is jane. the subject jane Wait, then, so J- evie, jane, <laughs> evie is the Evie's doll the ghost oh yeah or the or whatever the entity and demon the, yeah one of our characters leaves goes off and does this sort of lovecraftian investigation comes back with the information that that evie was the real name of a girl who was involved with a, as a cult uh, who worshiped an ancient demon and that you know they kind of it turns out that the girl they've got this congressional jane is actually the girl from the cult and she is secretly manifesting firepower so the movie mm-hmm. there's this big twist where suddenly she becomes like a fire demon and it's like sets people on fire kills people and then the the guy who's the cameraman who's been our pov character for a lot of the movie mm-hmm. sort of sees some kind of demon come out of her at the end and then the next thing, it ends up with him being the subject of an investigation because everybody mm-hmm. died in this fire. Now he's considered to be a suspect, suspect. seems to he, be mentally gone, and then starts and he's setting smoking. his own hand. He smoke, his hand can be like, it's, it's like he's about to manifest his own. So I guess the thing is at the end, it turns out it was a demon and now it's manifested itself in him. And now he has fire starter mm-hmm. powers, I think. Well, even earlier on, they alluded to the the fire abilities because they uh, had the the subject's arm held out and they had a candle and they were, and it was lit and they were running that under her arm to see if she could feel that. And when she was uh, possessed by this, this Evie, she apparently couldn't feel pain. So they were kind of alluding to that earlier on, but I really don't think it was very clear. It did seem to kind of come out of the blue that she had these abilities and that she was able to basically spontaneously combust. Now, having these abilities, uh, to me, seem to imply that she was actually possessed by this demon, that it was the demon that had the abilities that was inside of her. And it wasn't Evie. She was Evie. I mean, that, so, right. And, then, and so, then in that bucket that was in her bedroom, that was the EVP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, what did I miss there? But no. So, no, so, no, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. But no, you're right. I, I think they're explicitly trying to tell us that it was that there was really a demon the whole time, which I guess kind of ties back to the opening credits where they have all this witchcraft and demon stuff that doesn't seem to have any purpose until the very end of the movie. But I, oh, yeah. I, I guess that they start the movie out saying inspired by actual events. Mm-hmm. Oh, but did you see the end credits? <laughs> they were showing pictures of somebody that was supposed to be the team you know yeah. like this was this actually was a true story and yeah. they were showing yeah. these photos of different people being the team but they're making them look like the old photographs of yes. them and i found yeah. that to be really disingenuous yes and uh, yeah. uh just mm, a really i don't know a flat really that, that, me. Wasn't the, yeah. that wasn't the story that it was based on so it is I mean, not it, it was it is not yeah. this was not it's not based on firestarter or any kind of like the the story it's based on is so much more mundane and weird and silly uh, well, but, and before, Canadian, but yeah, and Canadian. So it's nicer. It, Not uh, British. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing Come is, is <laughs> we've talked about a lot of stuff that just flat out sucks about this movie. Um, but Blake, you, you said that there was a couple of things that you almost liked. Uh, can, oh, can, yeah, you re- no, there's, can you recall <laughs> any of them? Do tell. Yeah. Um, there's I've really got good... one or two. Yeah, no, there's some great jump scares. Uh, they have a good use of sound. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I would say they kind of overplay the screaming girl to scare you thing. That, I mean, that it is irritating at some point. It, some, it starts mm-hmm. out being, oh, no, what's going on? And later on, it becomes, oh, for God's sake, please just stop screaming. Pick a different jump scare technique. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I always love it when characters go do historical research period i don't it's like it almost doesn't matter what they come up with if if the scooby gang hits the library i'm in uh so i like mm-hmm. that part um yeah so and again nothing wrong with the cinematography their use of the uh the camera footage 
that's supposed to be shot by our, our POV character is good, mm -hmm. except little problem with the story. At the end, they tell him that there is no footage, that everything was destroyed. So what were right. we watching? Like, like, what was all oh, that about? Exactly, like, yeah. yeah. And he was holding the camera as well. Yeah. And then he, yeah. Uh, but oh, I was going to say... Yeah. Murder Sorry, investigation, but you can continue to hold this empty camera. Yes, if you'd like. yes, exactly. Yes, the, the evidence, yeah. But I do want to say just about the research. Uh, I've actually done that kind of research, researching uh, ancient uh, scripts and writing systems. And let me tell you, it's very mundane work. It takes a very long time to find anything. And, and even still, to, to find what you're looking for, you, you may not even be able to achieve that. And yet he goes into the library um, and he is there for uh, maybe an hour or something uh, and has to dash back so that the, the professor is not aware of what he's doing. And all I mean, the he, files. <laughs> and, and he finds exactly. everything that he's looking for in such a short period of time. And I, I found that to be very unrealistic. Well, I remember, uh, Karen, you and I trying to find the uh, original uh, mention of the uh, Silvercliff Cemetery in the archives uh, in, in the Colorado History Museum. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, it was painstaking work. It was painstaking work. It was really exciting and... when we found it, but it was mm -hmm. not, you know, the thing is, is with his, it almost seemed like Eye of the Tiger should have been playing in the background because it was kind of like this <laughs> yeah, montage yeah, yeah. where he's, yeah. you know, uh, getting <clears throat> yeah. in shape for the fight. And, you know, it was just kind of, mm. uh, if they had had some good inspirational music behind Ooh. that, you get your blood pumping, that would have been probably a better uh, scene. Well, he was looking, yeah, for that, that symbol. And uh, it just seemed like he... he knew exactly what he was doing and where he was going and so it was just just unrealistic just this google image search uh, is much older than people realize yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah this is 74 they could have done that um yeah but uh, yeah one of the things that i kind of enjoyed i mean there was a moment that i can't even remember what it was karen but you said oh that was interesting um I've but forgotten. <laughs> I can't remember what it was either. So it really was great. So the one uh, interesting part. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's good. every <laughs> now, like sometimes we get a movie and it's got not great scores, and they're like maybe the scores will be like at fifty percent. I'm like, okay, maybe half the people hated it and half the people loved it. You know, this one's got low scores because it's just not that good. So, mm. um, yeah, that's a that's, but. We brought it into the fold and we're covering it here because it's allegedly based on a true story. Right. So, which is much more interesting, I think. The part that I thought was fun was uh, near the end when mm -hmm. uh, the, the demon is manifesting and Chrissy, she's the first one to go. She gets pulled out the window and then all you mm -hmm. hear is her going back in the window above them and through that room above them. But you don't see what's going mm -hmm. on, but you hear it. And I did, I did kind of enjoy that. I thought that was kind of fun for her to get ripped out the window and then back in upstairs was was kind of cool. And yeah. uh, and listening to it was a little terrifying sounding. So um, yeah, that yeah, I enjoyed. You didn't know exactly what was happening. Right. So <sighs> see, did not defy all expectations. Bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not but, sure what to make of her character. I mean, she seemed to be like. She kept talking about she had trauma and whatnot, but then she basically just sat around smoking, talking with a kind of half British, half Russian accent. I'm not sure what well, was and there was. A, I thought at yeah, first she was like French or something, and yeah, then and that accent went away, like, and then she was something else. And Then she was playing nurse. I was very uncomfortable with that. She was administering injections. Yeah. and uh, So, yeah, I didn't really know what role. Yeah. What? Okay, why did the doctor have medicine to kill somebody and bring them back? What is that just standard? Oh. Yeah, but look, look, I've got, I've got this. Look, right we all hear the ball of curare yeah. on our desk, right? <laughs> yeah. But then he so wasn't going to use it either. You know, he was trying to use the the cameraman's uh, love to bring her yeah. back, to to uh, to uh, I guess get rid of the demon and to to bring her back yeah, to life. To, so it was just make her want to come back. It, it's and, a callback to a... our uh, zombie episode. Tetra dot tetra dot. Yep. It's a Stop toxin. <laughs> toxin. Yeah. But you know, here he is. <laughs> here he is purporting to be rational and to be a non believer and a scientist and a skeptic. And yet he's thinking that he can do that. It was just, he, he lost his way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. He didn't have much of a way to begin with. You know, and of course, you find yeah. out that that original subject was actually his son that he was torturing. Yes. Um, 
you know, and that, you know, and who eventually, daddy, I don't want to do it anymore, daddy kind of thing. And it was just like, oh, do we really have to go there? Yeah, it, it, it he's not a good character. I'm just gonna say that. I, 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 I'm gonna call him a villain. I mean, even though he's not the supernatural menace, he's not a good guy. So he yeah. kind of, Absolutely of all not. the people I who don't it. make it, he kind of deserves it. So, yeah, I found him to be more antagonist. Yeah, mm. and, uh, yeah. But I think we should talk about the the true story now. You know, it's certainly it's more a beat. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's more a beat, but it's it's about as believable. Um, so yeah, let, let, let's talk about the Philip experiment. Now, the Philip mm -hmm. experiment is an interesting one because it is supposed to be you know the scientific approach, but there's really no evidence there was any science in this at all. All we have is, oh yeah, yeah, believe me, this is what they did and this is what <laughs> happened, but we've got no proof of anything. We've got no records, we've got nothing. So, hey, uh, there, there's, the, still, there's, there's footage out there, but that's a recreation. In it's a studio, recreation, so. yeah. That's we right. don't even, even yeah. know that recreation was a hoax. You know, we don't know. But, but in, in 1972, is, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say what's strange to me uh, is that the the head of the project is Dr. George Owen, A.R. Uh, George Owen, that uh, he was a mathematician and a geneticist. So he wasn't a parapsychologist. He wasn't a uh, psychologist or anything like that. I thought his background was uh, not directly relevant to this. Yeah, yeah, not exactly. Um, <laughs> but so this yeah, is but the, again, what, this, you know... It, Ahead, it's, it's, the, it's the Toronto Society for Psychical Research. And so right. th th there are multiple international psychical research groups. Uh, mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. Society for Psychical Research in England, the American Psychical Famous Society, one. Yeah. yeah, the ASPR, and here is the Toronto Society for Psychical Research. And what these all have in common mm -hmm. is these are largely uh, amateur groups. I mean, they have mm -hmm. all kinds of expertise from different fields there, but they're people who are interested in psychic powers, spiritualism, and, you know, how to investigate those ideas. Right. And um, they're not scientific bodies. Some of them have done really cool experiments and they've written papers and investigations. Some of these are wildly unlikely and some of them are really interesting. But uh, this one struck me as not really rigorous. And the, the premise is, no. right, that they're going to try to perform spiritualist type uh, seances and try to contact some some entity. And at first it starts out with normal ghost research, but they don't get anything. So they decided to create an entity from fiction. Mm -hmm. They just make him up. And, and then let's, let's stop there for a moment because, okay. um, and, and the reason I want to stop you is because uh, there's several different stories about what happened with the Philip experiment. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And the one I'm familiar with is from the get go, the whole purpose was to create an artificial ghost. And that was that was absolutely from the beginning. They were going to create this artificial ghost and try to mm -hmm. summon him. And they created his background and, and everything. So, you know, uh, to see if it would fall in line with that. But the way they were contacting him originally was all sitting in silence. Uh, yes. For, yep. for hours. With no and luck. It, yep. And it, no luck. And one story says they did that for a year with no luck. Another one says for some time. Another one says a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So really, mm -hmm. they kept great records, apparently. Uh, well, right, there, yeah. there is a book there was, that came out of the project, uh, mm -hmm. but it is extremely rare. I got a chance to read it about five years ago, but I foolishly didn't make notes. Mm. And I should have because I didn't know we'd be revisiting it. But I, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, if you can get a hold of it, it's like a two hundred dollar paperback, and you'll be disappointed because it's Ooh, like a four dollar wow. paperback. You know what I mean? Right. So, mm -hmm. it, but uh, it 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 is very exuberant in its prose. I'll say that. It, like mm -hmm. the people who wrote it were very excited about what they had done. So so who who had written this? Was it Owen uh, or? It was not Owen. It was uh, further to what Blake was saying I, about Iris, his son. Iris Owen. Oh yeah. Okay, so his wife. That that yeah. was his yeah. wife. Yeah. And, um, and she was further, very excited. She was. She really was. But further to what Blake was saying about uh, people coming from different kinds of backgrounds and and uh, not necessarily being scientists, I think that there were, were about eight people who were involved in the project, and there was a student, there was an accountant. Um, I, there was, you know, Owen and his wife and a number of other people from all different kinds of backgrounds. So I don't know if they 
chose those people for for that particular reason or if they were just those those people who were interested in, in being involved yeah i don't know but i the book is called conjuring up philip an mm -hmm. adventure right. in psychokinesis and it came out yeah. in 77 and mm -hmm. uh, it's uh i have seen paper, that book before yeah the paper Me book too. is like anywhere from 200 to 350 dollars right now so it's like how follow. did you get a copy of it then you do just i checked it out from, from a library, library. yeah I checked oh, it out from a wow library. so yeah wow. yeah it was, yeah but was, I think we uh, should talk a bit too about the fictional character that they created. So yeah, I think yeah. his name was Philip Philip Aylesford, and Aylesford, uh, yeah. and I don't know if they deliberately did this, but there were a lot of contradictions with his character and his background. And uh, I believe he was a 17th century English guy, and uh, yeah, apparently he was made a knight uh, at the age of 16, 16. which I don't. Yeah, it wouldn't really happen, and that he was good friends with Charles II, which doesn't does, certainly doesn't line up with the, the time frame for Charles II. Um, I think by the time that so Philip um, had uh, committed suicide when he was about thirty, yes. and it was after that time that Charles II had um, been uh, become king. So that yeah, the, the details just don't mesh up, and I'm not sure if they intentionally yeah. did that. Um, they didn't have the, Google back then. They didn't have, you know, yeah, the, they, so, so there you a, lot, go. a lot of this but, research effort, you know, just, well, I mean, they're almost, almost legitimately, they're kind of making up a, a fictional character, almost like a role-playing game, you know? Yeah. And, but it was really silly. I think they still could have done a better job because he oh, was married to a, he, he, he was married to a woman called Dorothea, but he wasn't in love with her. It was an unhappy marriage. And then he fell in love with a witch as you do. And so uh, this, Lady was she burnt was... at the stake. She Wait a so... minute. Romany. <laughs> Dorothy and a yes. witch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, a house fell he... on her. So that's, <laughs> that's why he took his life because the, the love of his life had uh, been burnt at the stake. So, yeah, it's just an over the top story. And um, I believe that they communicated with with him they never were able to manifest him as a ghost or to see an apparition of him but they'd also uh, i think contacted a number of other ghosts i, I can't remember the names of uh got them written down somewhere lilith and uh, humphrey, humphrey were two yeah. other mm -hmm. two other um spirits that they communicated with but um yeah i do think it's interesting that a lot of this is kind of just passed on hearsay and that uh the the footage that we see is often presented as being, oh, this is footage from the experiment. Right. But that's not the case. It was recreated later on. But there are a yes. few photographs of the group. Well, it yeah. was, it, you know, what, what they claim uh, is that after, you know, this time of not having anything working by sitting in silence, um, you, you hear one report that says that they just decided to get together and have fun, laugh, tell stories, tell jokes and drink and sing and, yep. and, and sing. Like a lot and, of paranormal groups. Like a lot of paranormal groups, tell Chuck Norris facts, uh, uh, those kind of things. <laughs> but um, it, it's, you know. When you're singing manifests ghosts, karaoke becomes scary -oke. Okay. I could see him <laughs> plotting that one, <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. So the, the thing is, is you've got that that story, but you have another story that says that they sat around and silence didn't work. So they started the 19th century practice of table turning, um, and uh, which I would table think, tipping. There's lots of yeah. It's called table it. tipping. Table turning uh, to me is you know more of uh, you know playing old albums. Well, it's like having uh, a lazy with Susan table. with the spices on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, and it, it comes from that same kind of behavior of like the that game they play at parties with light as a feather, stiff as a board. Right. Where you basically combine your energy and then you could just use your fingertips to lift something heavy. Oh, yes. Or, but but or or just, just for just, fun, just let's, not, let's not call it energy just for fun and let's just call it strength. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, just, just we don't want to give the wrong idea. <laughs> distributing the weight amongst yeah. multiple participants makes it feel exactly. lighter. I don't. Is that where but, you're heading with it? Yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I mean, it's the same thing as when you have somebody uh, with with long hair that that you know wads their hair up and then can hang from it, and it doesn't hurt their oh. scalp. But if you pull one hair, it's like ow. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> looking at me. It, it's, uh, um, I was looking at Blake because. <laughs> what goes know, on at your house? Is <laughs> your thing. That's fine. So. <laughs> but no, that's you, you've you got the hairs distributing the weight and all taking part. There's a downside the to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One too many times, but I do think it's interesting that they didn't have uh, any, they didn't experience any phenomena until they introduced that Victorian seance environment and they dimmed the lights and they, uh, you know, started, I think they were even dressing up in period Sometimes, or yeah. something is what I heard. Yep. And uh, so that really makes me think that you have that, uh, that aspect of uh, communal reinforcement with the people playing roles, you know, a role playing aspect um and suddenly oh, people are experiencing you know sounds and, and smells and sights um table tipping and the other mm -hmm. things the other kinds of phenomena that uh, that took place but, now, um, this would have been if, if the movie had stuck with this idea the mm -hmm. the idea of taking communal ideas and thoughts and energy or focus and turning mm -hmm. it into some entity with its own volition now, that, right. that's it's commonly called a tulpa these days in the paranormal world. We've talked about mm -hmm. that before, yes. but that's a stolen yep. term from Tibetan Buddhism. And that's mm -hmm. not really what it means, but that, that's what it's come to mean, largely because of the work of theosophists and spiritualists who've turned the term mm -hmm. into a Western idea of we can take our combined will and make it manifest in an entity. Law of attraction, now, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. If, if it were something bigger... There's, there's another idea called an egregore, which is more like the spirit of the city or, you know, like a bigger idea, you know, that that's mm -hmm. a manifest energy based on a, a bigger theme and not necessarily like a, uh, a, a what, just a, a, some kind of cognizant entity with its own thing. So it sounds like uh, a weird think, breakfast dish, though. Okay. Uh, it, does, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. The all, all you can eat egregore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> delicious <laughs> mm. but but I, I guess the thing is in the movie it's not really a, a, a tulpa because it turns out it really was a demon you know that so but but clearly that's, within that's the where Philippi disbelief in hollywood will get you though yeah mm -hmm. but but the but the thing in the philip experiment if there is a paranormal explanation it seems to be describing a tulpa or my mom would say it's a demon uh, or I would say it's probably, you know, group psychology. There's social stuff mm -hmm. going on there. So. Right, right. And, and that's the thing is, is basically they, I think, were hoping to prove that thought forms are real. And, yeah. and, and that's been promoted by, you know, many different groups over the years in many different ways. Uh, like I said, law of attraction. And... Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. absolutely the same idea of thought forms. Thought There was a book called Thought Forms, uh, I think written in... Uh, 1901 uh that you know covers all of this and then you know every get rich quick scheme so along thought, the way thoughts become things yeah yes, that's the, the, the think and grow rich uh which yes. many people see as a perfectly fine business book a lot of it ties into manifesting your ideas and yes. there's a weird thing there like there's this whole idea in chaos magic is another thing where you basically focus on an idea and you want it to come true and you do all these rituals to make it come true as long as you also do the real life world things that you also need to do to make it come true, when it comes mm -hmm. true, did you really need the magic? I mean, maybe people yeah. do, yeah. but I mean, I mean, largely yeah. it seems like I, I've, you know, written this down on a piece of paper and I think about it throughout the day. Also, I do all the required forms and all the steps and <laughs> you pay the bills and all those things. So no. when things oh, come yeah. out in my fat, you know, in my favor, was it the magic? Or was yeah. it me working yeah. my ass off? You know, so yeah, exactly. I, I mean, yeah. James mm -hmm. James Arthur Ray, uh, who mm -hmm. some of us know was a, a murderer as well. Um, he, uh, you know, with his work with the the secret um, and the, the law of attraction, uh, he actually kind of reveals in in that accidentally that just thinking about something and not doing the work is not going to mm -hmm. do anything for you. You you have mm -hmm. to do the work. So yeah, it's that same question. Well, then did I need to do the meditating on it thing? Mm. Yep. You know, uh, it's, yep. you know, it's good to have focus, it's but that's it is the claim. It, They're talking about good. putting it out to the universe and having it come back to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there, oh. if you, the difference between a, a, a magic themed, you know, secret book, and a getting things done, work down this list, figure out the steps you need to do, do all the steps and things will be accomplished. 
it's mm -hmm. they're really closely parallel like i can really see where the lure of thinking that the magic makes a difference you know um, yeah it's, it's self-help kind of aspect yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But, maybe uh, we I'm... should uh maybe we should write a book called get rich quick without the magic yeah let's see yeah. what happens yeah um, cause that's where Get the money is. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the money, the money is in coming up with the scheme, not, you know, following someone else's mm -hmm. directions. Uh, but the thing is, is yeah, the Philip experiment claimed to have, uh, success. They claimed that it worked and, and, um, several other people tried to replicate the experiment down the road mm -hmm. with a little more mm -hmm. rigorous scientific, uh, protocol and it didn't work they couldn't get it to work the same way. Um, and I do think it's interesting because what you're basically talking about with table tipping is uh, idiomotor effect, you know, in a, in a communal situation. Mm -hmm. When everybody's got one goal, uh, they're gonna sort of make things happen uh, without realizing it. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of how that, that goes. That's how it works. Idiomotor is, is amazing. I think uh, that there have been other experiments. I wouldn't say that they were necessarily replicating the Philip experiment, but certainly looking at uh, Victorian seances. Uh, well, not only experiments, but also celebrities doing TV shows on this kind of thing. But uh, it makes me think of uh, Richard Wiseman, who did some experiments back in the 1990s on Victorian seances. And um, his results were interesting in that he had some actors who were um, part of the seances and they would suggest that certain things had happened. For example, I think one suggested that a table had levitated and, you know, very obviously nothing had happened. But for those people who were attending, who were believers, they thought that they did see the table levitate. And uh, so he did several different experiments and um, found that the people experiencing phenomena was really based on whether they were a believer or a non-believer. So the non-believers were not susceptible to suggestion, didn't have any experiences, but those who believed when they were told that something had happened, oh, yes, yes, I saw that too. And they would you know, participate in that communal reinforcement. So I think that that's a, an, a very interesting perspective. Um, then I'm inclined I to believe him because he's a wise man from the East. <laughs> yeah, one of the three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it. then there's the the Darren Brown uh special. I don't know, Blake, if you saw that. Um that no. was going back to about I... 2004. Um and uh, when that came out, apparently it was the most complained about uh television show at the time. They had thousands of complaints from uh, religious groups, people saying that, you know, they're dabbling in the paranormal and uh, the occult and and uh, they shouldn't be on television, but at the same time, when they um, aired the the seance, about a thousand people phoned in. I think it was uh, Channel Four. Um, people phoned in to say that during the the watching this uh, episode that they had had paranormal experiences at home. And that kind of makes me think too of Yuri Geller when I was a kid, and he'd be on TV and he'd get you to, to get your out watch. your. Yep. Um, yeah, your, your broken watches, your and other things, and uh, to lay them around. And I remember mum, my mother, doing that and, and thinking that things had had uh, been fixed. And um, so, yeah, it's really, I think, just a uh, a matter of the suggestion. But Matt, you you saw uh, the the special or part of it with me. What did you think of that? Yeah. The Darren Brown uh, special. Well, the the thing that that really struck me right off was the fact that uh, Darren Brown doesn't tell you that he he does pre induce. The, these people into a state of suggestibility and uh, sometimes into a, a deep hypnosis uh, before uh, the the experiment is done. Uh, so one of the pieces we saw is where this young lady was put into this sort of uh, makeshift room that was basically made out of curtains and she had to sit in there and uh, with some things that were sitting on a uh, table next to her. And so she had to sit there with her eyes closed and concentrate on those things and uh, you know we, we could the audience couldn't see her but after a few moments things from that table were were hurling out of this this little room the tambourine came tambourine out tambourine and i mean it really appeared as if some sort of spiritual force was in there uh, creating poltergeist activity uh, but then he played back the uh, the video you know cuz he asked her you didn't touch anything right and she's like no i i didn't do anything 
So when he played back the video that they have the camera they had in there, she did grab those things and throw it. And she was amazed when she saw the video. She had no recollection of touching anything. So she, he had her in a, in a hypno, hypnotic trance uh, doing that. And, um, you know, it, it, only certain people can go to that stage of hypnosis and follow commands like that. But uh, that's why he only does it with certain people. Uh, he goes through a lot of people and suggestibility tests to find the ones that he can really work with and create some amazing uh, results with. So, and you have to keep that in mind when you have these groups getting together doing this. Are there people in this group that are heavily suggestible? And or uh, believe how always differentiate between a heavily suggestible person and someone who is just in on it and acting like they're not? I mean, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. I mean. If you, so exactly you, like the Wiseman experiments yeah, to have yeah, yeah. Uh, stooges yeah. uh, and actors in there. Stooges or yeah. bad agents. I mean, it's like when you're a uh -huh. kid and you're playing with a Ouija board and then there's one jerk that always makes the ghost say Blake is a fatty. You know, I just, <laughs> those ghosts, they're I, so I, mean. I hate it when that happens. I so. never yeah. have that <laughs> yeah. happen in any of mine. That's interesting. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would think. Um <laughs> But yeah, so it's, I, I, I love watching Darren Brown because of that, you know, being a, a mm. hypnotherapist myself, I really enjoy his uh, skills when it comes to that. And, uh, well, you know. he was really replicating the Victorian seances with that little room and, and the various things he did. And at one point, uh, actually restraining one of the, um, the audience members mm. as well when yeah. he was put into the room. And so, yeah, I mean, he really uh, had that, that kind of, that vibe they, going they, they were they were drinking absinthe and they were putting down colonial rebellions it was very authentic <laughs> but oh, no yeah it sounds, it sounds great but i do think it, it was just such Colonist. just thinking about the quiet ones um sorry i do think it was a real missed remember, opportunity to <laughs> what i remember I yeah yeah the movie we, we were supposed to talk about uh, the quiet ones <laughs> yeah. right? so was, um I, I think it was a real missed opportunity for uh an excellent script and and to really talk about and uh and focus on a lot of interesting things and i think it just went off the rails and um really they could have done such a, a better job with the if they had truly based it on the philip experiment uh or even something like they, that i just they could have had more a, interesting. it would have it could have been canadian they could have had more scenes of people eating poutine I think mm -hmm. that would have helped. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, mean, I would like... have enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> people, people saying, you know, sorry to each other a lot. I think sorry. Was... Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, the, the thing is. Uh, Snow camels. Snow it's... camels. <laughs> they, uh, um, you know, th this was sorry. replicated several times, you know, uh, but mm. the, the results were not replicated. Now, there is, uh, like, w when I did my sciences, that was originally my idea. I was going to create an artificial ghost and see what happened with people that didn't know that it was artificial. See, the Philip experiment, they all know it's artificial. They helped create him. Right. In the sciences mm -hmm. I did, I created him. His name was Neil. And... Uh, no one knew that he Very was fake spiritual. until the end. Yes, yes. Uh, please, everyone, kneel. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it was definitely a, a situation where with them not knowing whether it was real or not, the suggestibility played a much larger role. And I was able mm -hmm. to get some great activity, um, but not anything levitating, not anything flying anywhere, but people believing that things were happening. And that, and that was that was wonderful. But there was another experiment that supposedly is ongoing, but I don't know if it still is, called the Skippy experiment. And that one took place in Sydney, Australia. Mm. And uh, I believe it started around 2009. And they tried to create this ghost. This one was a young girl who was murdered and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they make wild claims about how well it works and everything. But again, no video, no audio, no nothing to show. And, and they're going, oh, well, oh, we're, we're, we're going to. When, when, when we can, when we can, we're going to release this video. And then that starts smacking of other things like, um, you know, Stan Romanek talking about his yes. alien visitations again. Oh, well, when the scientists are done, you know, reviewing it, then I'll show it to the world. But until yeah. I yeah. can't, I yeah. can't. Promises, but, promises. Yeah, yeah. So and so this has been going on with uh, the the Skippy experiment for a long time. There's so been was, no results. There's been nothing they're showing, but they're making I, um, huge claims. 
I had not heard about them before. Um, is that a reference to Skippy the Bush Kangaroo, the television show from the <laughs> um, I think actually, 60s no, and 70s? Skippy was a 14-year-old girl. Is that a common name for a 14-year-old? I mean, is that for girls? Um, is that a girl name, Skippy? Uh, it, not, not that I'm aware of. But... I'd heard of a parallel experiment where they were like, Skippy they were Carmen. looking for like a, a boy who had disappeared when he was young and now he can manifest and like fly um and take people back to an island and play like, fight against pirates it's the peter pan experiment it's, it's yeah uh, a lot that more was ongoing that was oh, ongoing okay. as well. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah but I i'm think sorry but I, I just I, when i hear skippy all i think of is peanut butter and that guy <laughs> and then friend from family ties you know so yeah, oh, yeah. peanut yeah. butter yeah. takes her right back to peter skippy's, pan yeah two australians skippy's the the bush kangaroo the tv show it's kind what of like is, uh lassie but for a uh, bit of kangaroo Oh, so it's a live action kangaroo. <clears throat> what? I mean, it's like a like a real like a real kangaroo. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Real kangaroo. I mean, and then, then they'd I... be like, what what's up? What's up, Sk <laughs> Skippy? What? Somebody's trapped? What? A hanging rock? Okay, let's go. And then they would go and say hops along. No, a absolutely. When when I grew up, because uh, I grew up on the, the uh, northern beaches and there's a, a place called Terry Hills. There used to be a uh, kind of animal sanctuary there and it was informally known as uh, Skippy Park and they had uh, what uh, they would tell kids was Skippy from the TV series and uh, you know I just noticed as I got older the cat the, the, the kangaroo you know had been around for uh, seemingly decades and so obviously they were replacing the kangaroo out but uh, it was really just a kind of nature yeah. park. Skippy um, moved but, to, to a farm upstate yeah. where you can hop around freely. Was like <laughs> yeah at the back paddock but oh, yeah. uh yeah so that that's i thought it must have been a reference to that because that's for australians synonymous with kangaroos the tv yeah, show anyway is, so it is it is you're strange. of a certain age yeah there's a there's yeah, a quote that, that is... there's, there's a quote from this uh the skippy experiment uh says the group met once a week for five months and saw no results frustrated they dispensed with the agency skippy and began sitting around a light Three leg I don't know what agency Skippy means, but center a light uh, mm. three legged card table. Success. The first night they heard a light tapping noise from somewhere inside the table. The second sitting brought startling results as well. After 15 minutes, the table began moving seemingly of its own accord. Soon it was spinning around, balancing on one leg and dragging participants behind it. But somehow nobody was <laughs> videoing this in 2009. Nobody mm, had a camera. Yeah. Uh, wow. Where did you know, these take place in Australia? It just says Sydney. That's uh, that's okay. all that yeah. I can see right here. But uh, it, it is just a little strange because it, it was supposedly put together by a veteran paranormal investigator named Michael Williams. Now, I'm a veteran paranormal mm -hmm. investigator. Karen, you're a veteran paranormal investigator. If you're going to be trying to Thanks. make something happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, you, anomalous, you will document anomalous, it, uh, claims investigator. Um, anyway, but the thing is, yeah, you want to document. And how do we in this day and age document? We record with a device that records. Well, what makes me suspicious, too, is hearing that it was a three-legged table. It sounds like a very light weight very table. Very easy and, to do some, yeah. And if you go looking on YouTube, if you look up table tipping and you see uh, magicians' um, uh, you know, tricks, yeah. They're always using these really lightweight tables that kind of on the surface look like they could potentially be heavy, but I uh, usually made a very light board or chipboard or something like that. Yeah. So well, that you remember up at the Stanley Hotel when mm -hmm. we were looking at that table that supposedly was a heavy oak table and we were able to lift it up with our pinkies. Well, um, yeah, I mean, that was the table, wasn't it? That was that supposedly was the moved by that, the that moved ghost, ghost hunters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was very light, that table. I mean, mm -hmm. it kind of, uh, from the, the style of it, it looked like it was heavy and ornate, but no, that was really lightweight. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that what, that's what works well for, you know, a, a communal idiomotor effect. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but this one is just strange because uh, they continue to do this. They continue to get uh, together for five months and no one thought to bring a camera. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, very suspicious. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Sad story. That well, <laughs> it is. Bad, bad stories all around, yeah, with this topic. So we got yeah. any final thoughts on the quiet ones? Don't watch it. <laughs> I'm not going to give up on Hammer. I believe they, they've got still things in the future. I I, I, I love that company 
from way back. And so, you know, I like to see the name again. This was not a good example of what they could do. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I still I mean, think it's worth watching anyway. If you're interested in this kind of these claims, and if, this if kind you want to join topics. us, yeah, if you want to join us, especially um, on on this uh, this episode of Dotes to really know what we're talking about and be able to relate to the pain we've gone through, then by all means, <laughs> yeah. I, I, watch it with us and uh, get you yourself know, watch a it. drink. Yeah, and and enjoy because there there are some fun pieces in it. Um, it's uh other than that i i would not recommend it to be honest nope nope yeah well, <laughs> we, i mean i, ha I hate it because i i'm so people work so hard to make movies i'm such oh, a generous yes. person it's like mm, just don't you know so cost yeah. a lot of money to make and i think they made a lot of money from the uh, film they too, made a lot so. of money because it was only like a budget of like two hundred thousand or something yeah that's what i heard oh, it was oh, like yeah. 17 million but i haven't seen any signs of a of a quiet ones too Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Won't be watching that one. But we what if we already just talking. let's like we spend a little time in a room and see if we can manifest big piles of cash. Oh my god, it actually worked. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There you little... go. It does work for, for very nice. few. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, the, you, the quiet ones too. What would they? Do? They could do it on Skippy, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If they end up with a quiet with riot. Yeah. 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 So oh. yeah, and, and again, I, I still don't get the Quiet Ones reference. Uh, now, from what we could understand, mm -hmm. and see if you get the same thing, Blake, that the Quiet Ones were the professor's students that he were like the in group. his little group that they well, never talked the, about what he did. The, I always assumed Philippi it was the Quiet Ones are the ones you have to watch out for. Like it's because she was growing up as the, one of the quiet introverted type people. Well, you remember yeah, uh, in, the, in the, the montage scene where he's working out in the library uh, to Eye of the Tiger <laughs> and the one guy goes, oh, are you one of Professor uh, oh. Calhoun's or whatever his name was? Um, quiet Oakland. Ones. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, that, that and that's the, the only time it's mentioned in the whole movie. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. that's yeah. kind of stupid to have that be the title. I don't want to say stupid, I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I'm sure someone did put a lot of work. It wasn't this. Um, no, but... wasn't fitting. But I think with the uh, the Philip experiment, the the group was known as the Owen group. So I wonder if it was just kind of a nod towards them having this this separate name. I'm not sure, mm. uh, but it, it wasn't it wasn't explicit. It's not a mystery. I feel like putting much more energy <laughs> into. Just, no, just I'm, I'm I'm done with this film. I think, but that's that's why I wanted to mention uh, the next month's topic. Uh, we've been talking about um yeah, well people who are watching this you should go back if you haven't already seen it and to watch the last episode of monster talk live where oh. blake gone he's disappeared well you know it's not as bad as last time last time he yeah. <laughs> really went away this time he just showed yep. us his name now my camera yes. just yeah, yeah, gave, yeah. gave up the ghost so oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was uh, sick of the we, quiet uh, ones as well we treated uh, seances in the, the last Monster Talk Live. And so we have decided that in the next episode of Monster Talk Live, we're going to talk about EVPs. So I think that's going to be a fun But not EVs P, show. which I was talking about earlier. That's different. No, so. That is different. No, definitely. We're, we're <laughs> and I'm, I'm so that. glad that that all worked out, that that pun could be used. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, Very it's happy about that. It's great. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> But, uh, but you know, when next... that happens, you're in trouble. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you were going to be talking about EVPs. And it, it's mm -hmm. interesting because the the movie that we're going to be doing for Dotes is mm -hmm. not necessarily based on a true story, but it's based on a true activity. I'll, I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a based on an extrapolation of what might kind of, what could happen if it were real. Mm -hmm. So, yes. yeah. Yeah. So it is yeah, uh looking forward it, it to is that. The, the the quiet ones too. No, no, it's um <laughs> yeah. white noise. White noise, yeah. White, white noise. noise. So we gone from the quiet ones to white noise. So yeah, yeah. that's uh um I don't know if they'll have Slade in this one, but uh yeah. so if well, anybody's there's, interested there's lots of scenes with him listening to audio tape, you could put any music there you want. So that's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Yeah. But if anyone's interesting to see the group that Quiet Riot wanted to be, go look up Slade. That's, they were amazing. And on that on that note, uh -huh. <laughs> thank you very much for for joining us. And uh, please do subscribe to our channel and like our videos and comment as well. And, um, and support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward yes. slash monster talk. We appreciate yes. that very much and put a lot of 
a lot of research and work into to, uh, having to put these together and, and having to watch bad watch movies. And terrible <laughs> movies. <laughs> yeah, this is almost a mystery uh, theater 3000 kind of thing. Um, I'm excited yeah, about the next yeah. movie because yeah. I remember how terrified I was to watch the film and then when it was over how disappointed i was that i wasn't more scared so i'm, I'm looking forward to rewatching it and see how it holds up because well, it's michael keaton right now. it's michael yeah. keaton oh he's so, a solid actor yeah, yeah so yeah no. so um yeah i don't know maybe i'll accidentally watch birdman or something instead but uh, the, the uh, <laughs> but yes uh, and, and and if anybody wants to contact youtube and say hey you need to monetize monster talk on youtube um that yeah, not because they're not listening show. to us it's really strange it's yeah. really strange. like i said we've we've met all of their requirements uh for almost two years now but yeah um, we have and maybe they, and i they need never... to do more shirtless skateboarding hmm. do you think it would help uh, do you, do you um, no. uh, have any interest in, in buying an english bulldog <laughs> so, i do not yeah, yeah because if that. you did yeah. some skateboarding Teaching with an english bulldog skateboard. shirtless got it probably uh We'll, we'll keep working on that. And yeah, uh, yeah, skateboarding yeah. to Don't Stop Believing, I believe, is uh, also a good one. Um, which kind of goes along uh, or goes opposite to what we usually preach. But, oh, okay, uh, okay. When we finish up, I'm actually going to go see Journey. So we're going. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So, really, 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 oh, really, okay. really. Okay. But you were well, joking. Oh, all right. No, no, then. Well. no. Be safe on your journey. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, we're fun. mostly excited because Kathleen hates Toto. And they're the opening act. So it's like, we all wanted to see Journey. And uh, you see how this ate... came back around yeah, to yeah. the witch and the uh, Dorothy. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, there's sure something did. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. on that note, I think <laughs> we should probably cut out part of this anyway and, and kind of yeah, sign, yeah. try to sign Oh, off. this is gold. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Patreon bonus. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, all right. definitely. All right, all right everyone. Okay. Thank you so much for Thanks joining for us. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Adios. Bye.